All right, guys, so this is my buddy's 99 Monte Carlo, and uh, it's got a radiator problem, so we're going to swap out the radiator, and we're going to take you with us. So uh, stand by. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is what? First thing we got to do is we got to take off these two side brackets, which hold the fender and the front end together, uh, which take a 13 millimeter or half inch. Um, so we're going to take those off first, that way we can get to the radiator. Ultimately, the first thing you're going to do is drain your radiator, which we've already done. But, uh... That takes longer. Yeah. Okay. One up here, so there's six bolts all together. Three on, Three each, on side. each bracket. That side's done, and come over here, take this side off. Now see, basically, it's his car, it's his repair, but it's my garage, so, Basically, I'm gonna stand here and watch him work until he needs help and uh, smoke all his cigarettes. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and then, oh, no problem, buddy. And then, uh, probably the next uh, automotive project we're, we're gonna get to do is uh, we're gonna replace the uh, left front fender on my truck. All right, so both brackets come off like that. Now, so you can see right here, these are slotted. You always want to put this one in first, and then you can adjust the other ones. The adjustable uh, or the oblong holes go toward the uh, toward the radiator. Yeah. All right. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the two front engine mount bolts. The yeah. Um, so there's two right here, and there's two down, or one on the bottom side, on the front. So we're gonna take those off, and then next we're gonna just loosen up the two, or the butt, and the nut, the, the bolt and the nut for the motor mount. That way we can just turn it up. That way we don't have to take it all the way off. Even though they didn't get replaced, but don't have the money right now. And yes, pneumatic tools would be faster, but uh, they're a lot noisier too. Yeah. And my little electric gun, my battery died on it, and my charger's at home. I actually said another friend's house. <laughs> See, you I was never. on his car. You never loan any tools. No, I was working on his car. Oh, and I don't oh. sit there. And just haven't gotten back over there to finish his car to school and everything. And I remember when I was a kid. When I needed to fix something on my bike, or you know, when, when I got older, when I fixed on my car or whatever, my dad'd be like, "Nope, what do you need to do? Let me see it." And he would do it because he didn't want me to use his tools in the garage, inside the garage, because they he was afraid get that stolen or lost. Right. So they wouldn't they wouldn't get lost. He he knew that they got put back in the right way, which I'm that way now too. So. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think the only person I've ever let my, you know, my tools uh, into somebody else's hands was you. Well, that was smooth. <laughs> hot, so. Yeah, you did. That was a nice it's catch. It's just hot and sweaty, so. Yeah, I think the only, us, the only person that's ever used my tools other than me is you. Yeah, but I always put them back. Yeah, well, that's why I let you use them. And I clean them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a big thing too. I don't like my I shit all greasy. So just remember guys, if you're borrowing someone else's tools, and you get them clean, you return them clean. <laughs> That's one way to ruin a friendship, or really piss someone off. Yeah. Because I hate it when people borrow my tools and they bring it back to me a fucking mess, and then I end up clean it. 
That pisses me off, because I didn't do it. Well, for me, I always clean my tools afterwards. Yeah. After each vehicle I work on. Because there's no real point. I mean, depending on what you're doing, you know, sometimes you need to clean them because they get oily and all that shit. What is that, bolt 90 miles long or what? Nah, they just like dry as fuck. Alright, so those are off. And again, these are same size, uh, 13 mil or a half an inch if that's what you, if you don't have a 13. Uh, they're the same size, you know. Alright, so then for the motor mounts, it's a 15 millimeter uh, socket. Or wrench. Um, I have both, right? I have two sockets. So I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a loosening. You don't have to take them all the way off because that's just retarded. Just like that. And then voila. Rotate it up, and yes, the engine will move back, but it's easy to pull back. So then the next thing is we got to take off the brackets for the fan and take the fan out, and then we're going to start doing the hoses, which are a little bit more pain in the ass. Um, but we might also take the air box off just so we have a little extra room. Uh, Okay, so now we're taking off the, uh, the air box. Yeah, taking out the air box because it's actually a lot easier. Um, you can get more room. So the first part is just taking off the top air box part, the cover. Phillips head screwdriver. You can use a Phillips or a flathead. Um, it's designed for both. Um, make it really easy. Take it off right here from the hose to the box to loosen the strap. That way, you can take the whole top off. Just like that. And of course, it's a nice, good, clean air filter. Alright, so there's a 10 mil socket or bolt right here on the side which holds the bottom air filter section. box bottom along with the battery underneath your windshield wiper fluid container. Which yeah, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why they would do that. Pop it off. Um, flyhead screwdriver. So bullshit plastic thing. Pop it off. Everything's gonna fight. Oh, hey, there's a hole there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where the hole goes in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so as you can see, the battery and everything's all right here. Um, and right here, there's just one bolt that holds the air box in. If it were a Ford, there'd be 15 bolts. Yeah. Well, no, not that many. If it was a Dodge. Oh, yeah, if it was a Dodge, definitely. Sorry for all of you Dodge fans. I feel sorry for you right now. <laughs> uh, just to let you know, if you haven't already noticed or known this, but uh, Fiat bought out Mopar or Chrysler. So, just letting you know. <laughs> Um, yeah. You guys might like them. I sure the hell don't. Mopar went downhill since probably late 70s, early 80s. Uh, 
Okay, so fan bolts next. Oh, it's also disconnected. Oh yeah, you gotta disconnect those electrical connections. Yeah. Which of course actually might be easier once we pull it out. Yeah. We can rotate it. Yeah. Well, it's only three bolts on each fan, so I mean it's not that big a deal. No. What size is that? Uh, they're ten mil. They're ten millimeter bolts. And of course, they're fucking long ones. Some are long. Yeah. They just take forever. Like I said, they're fucking long. They don't need to be at all that long. You don't even use half of it. <laughs> got bolts and crazy areas that have to fight. Oh, well, that's every manufacturer. Yeah, well they all do that. I, I noticed on that Toyota 4Runner I had every bolt was that way. <laughs> of course nothing was the same size. They were all different size bolts. Yeah. Well, that's Toyota. Yeah. But the nice thing about them, a lot of their shit just metric. Yeah. There is no standard sizes. Uh oh. Yeah. That one came out. It wasn't as long, but I saw where it fell. So. Yeah. No big deal on that. It's always nice when you hear him hit the floor. Okay. All right. Well, correction, guys. There's only two. The other one just slips in a little slot. And then you got to disconnect your connector. Which, of course, is a fucking pain in the ass because it's got that little flap on there. And you got to pry up just uh, the two transmission lines together as they come off of the transmission all the way over to the passenger side of the radio. And it's a 10 millimeter bolt. And just be careful when you put the new one on there uh, that you don't mess up the fins on your radiator. And it's located directly on the bottom in the center of the radiator. Yeah, right by your, pretty much right across from your oil filter. Um, for those of you that change your own oil, which if you don't, that's a uh, whole other story. So I went ahead and got that one off. So again, like I said, it's just real quick. Just pull out the transmission lines. After you take off that piece clip. And yes, it will leak. You will lose some of your transmission fluid. Yeah, I just got some on my hand. And just wrap up each of the lines that way. Not like too much, but it's gonna leak out of the radiator no matter what. But that's just what it does. Gravity. So we got all that out, and now just gotta take this one hose off. And you gotta take your uh, upper hose off too. Okay. Oh, you already, yeah, you already disconnected that. Okay. Which actually, this might be easier. Stupid clips that they got. You disconnect the line from your reservoir.
Yeah, be careful you don't break it. Yeah. Just a little part. Or if you can turn it, the hose. I am able to. And just grab the two little prongs on one side. That's just the pain in the ass part. Yeah, you're gonna clean that off my floor, right? Yes, I know that. <laughs> I got rags and shit. Okay. Well, one more thing on here, guys. Um, I guess there's uh, some kind of plug over here. That just takes a little wire. I have to drop it. Give me a flashlight. Let's we'll see what the hell I'm doing. Which is kind of funny because it's bright as hell out here today. It's like the seventh circle of hell hot out here. And that's the magic of YouTube right there. She's out and uh, ready for the new one. Yep. yep. All right, guys. So here's a little sensor that uh, we're messing with right here. Uh, apparently, I didn't need to take that spring out. Uh, but you do have to switch it out. It doesn't come with a new one. Uh, there is a plug that goes in here, which is this thing, which had brand new O-rings. So... Just take the old O-rings off of the sensor and put the, these good ones on here. So, um, that was my bad. I didn't know. Um, I'd never seen one on it before. So, it's first time experience on, on my own car, actually. And so, yeah, now we got the hose back on uh, for the lower and the upper. So, now it's just to stick it back in and start putting it all back together. And like I said, uh, Right here are the transmission lines, which they did come with the brand new Jesus clips. So all it is is push them on and, uh, you know, go from there. So here we go. And with that, that's the last bolt or the last uh, nut for the hose clamp for the radiator. Yep. Now we got to work on getting those fans in. So, Oh yeah, gotta get this mount in. Right here, it has this little holder for uh, your lines. Got it. For some electrical lines, so that one was on the passenger side. So we're gonna put it back just that way. So this is the top. This is the side. And it just slides down into these little grooves. Oh wait, one more thing, guys. The one little bolt, 10 mil, for down on bottom, has to go back in. Oh yeah, don't forget that bolt. Otherwise the damn red air would be vibrating all over the place. Oh no, it's not that, it's the uh, transmission line. Oh yeah, yeah, you don't want to split those either.
Look at this long ass bolt. Putting the last bolt in for the second fan. And we're almost finished. Yeah, stay tuned, guys, because uh, we got some more interesting tidbits about this. For uh, when you're refilling up the uh, reservoir and the radiator, there's a couple of things that some models have it, some don't. Uh, I'm just lucky that mine does, and uh, it saves you a bunch of time. Take this special bolt. I don't know what special, but it is. Stick it in there. Which you can take it apart. Trying to do, but it came off. So that's your pump. You just stick it in place, like so. You put your line back on, stick it down in there. Make sure you got your connector. Reattach. And you take your little shit. back in there you go there's a couple other stuff on there but I said screw it took them off say it's just like that on my car back in and it's just a little simple put that back up which that should be screwdriver or an eight millimeter a socket right here I 
always go crisscross on them. I don't agree with that. Not a whole lot. Thirteen. All right, that's our side done. using the phone, remember? Screw it in just like that. And then you can put the other ones on. Almost ready to put fluid in this bad boy. You're gonna do the uh, well, show gonna, that valve next? Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna lower the car. Unfortunately, I gotta go to work here in a few minutes.
put this in the trunk? Yeah. Let's close for right now. As you can hang, hang on. all right guys so cars lowered um, you got one breather valve right here and you got one right here which is on this one right here is actually on the thermostat housing and the other one over here uh, is the one that comes off of your water pump okay you got to uh, Loosen this top one you hold the bottom one while you loosen the top one You know that way when you're filling it up It lets all the air come out of the system instead of You know doing it the other harder way um, So we're going to go ahead and do this now the thing is, is when you're filling it up as soon as the Coolant starts coming out you go ahead and close them uh, This one will be the last one to get closed since it's higher up so it's going to be less of a headache, uh, like I said, compared to the other ones where you got to sit there and let the car run, get the temp, you know, let the air bubbles pop out, all that stuff. So, we're going to go ahead and do that now. Alright, so the two sizes, alright, is a 10 millimeter and a 7, alright. 10 mil obviously is on the big one, and then your 7 is going to go right here. One. It's another one. Mm. Loosen all the way out. I'll take it out just to show you. It looks just like that. Right? And that lets air come out of the system. You know, I take it all the way out. Just loosen it enough. And then, like I said, it'll just loosen it. A couple turns. Alright, as I go by what the manufacturer recommends. Alright, so since this is a Chevy slash General Motors, they prefer to use it's called Dexcool. Alright, you can use Universal, which is the green, or sometimes gold, but I would suggest you use what the manufacturer prefers or whatever was inside of it. Uh, if it's a brand new vehicle, it'll automatically have the Dexcool, or if it's a uh, Mopar, it'll be a purple. Uh, Toyota is a red, same thing with Honda, they all have their own, but that's what they prefer you to use. All right. 13 bucks a gallon. Yeah, so just consider that little bit that, and then as you guys, I don't know if you heard that. All right. Now if you can see that right there, that's about what you want, but you want to do a little bit more. Uh, you want to have a steady stream coming out. So you are going to lose some. Like that. Oh, shit. And that right there. So we got a little overfill. Yeah. But that's fine. It's gonna be all over my floor. Cause even though know you got them here like that, you still want to start the car. Let it run for a few minutes. Uh there so might be some air still inside, whatnot. You don't want to over tighten these either. They're just yeah. little fitting. Yeah, they're they're tiny. But be careful with them. All right, but like you, like I said, this stuff will save you a lot of time, and a lot of headache. Um, I learned this from another mechanic, and I'm grateful for learning that.
my guys. So thanks for coming along with us on this uh, radiator uh, swap in this uh, uh, 99 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Uh, we appreciate you watching. Um, I know it was a long video, but uh, ain't gotta ha it's got to happen sometime. <laughs>